Hello, devotees. Oh, I didn't see you there. Let's try this again. Hello, devotees. So if you know me, I'm someone that can spend months without wishing in Genshin, with a goal of one of my accounts trying to save up to 100,000 free to play Primo Gems. As an avid hoarder, not only do I hoard Primo Gems, I also hoard both Mora and EXP books, even to the point of letting all my other characters sit at level 1. Now, I'm sure most of you watching want to spend the Mora and also level up the characters for me, and I get that. So to solve this crisis, I am going to start a new series, where I build and main a new character for 30 days. So since this is episode 1 of a series, I just picked the character I wanted to main, which is Yao Yao. I got her the same day as version 3.4's patch came out, so before you guys count the dates between the patch day until today, yes, I did main her for 30 days. I will basically go over what I learned, mistakes that I've made, and also go over some potential teams I tried her out with. I even tried making her a main DPS, which is not optimal, but who cares. Every character can be a DPS if you build them enough. Here's how I started with Yao Yao and transformed her from zero to hero. So day one is right after the Genshin version 3.4 update. I pulled for our item while aiming for at least one Yao Yao as well. Luckily we got her in our second temple. Okay. Got Yao Yao. So now we can finally use our leveling box to raise her. But before we could ascend her any further, we had to farm for her essential materials, which were dropped from a dendro hypostasis. The problem with this boss is that it's immune to dendro attacks. So I just used my Sino to deal damage, while our Yao Yao was in a party and acting as a cheerleader. I tried using Yao Yao to activate the restorative piffs at the end, but our bunny friend isn't cooperating. Luckily we had Nahida with us for backup, so we were fortunate enough to defeat the boss in the end. On the second day, I started doing a little bit of overworld farming as well, starting with the slimes. I kinda cheated with Nahida dealing the damage, but we're still in the process of leveling her up, so instead of using the EXP book, I defeated the slimes to get a little bit of EXP to get Yaya to level 40. So now we can finally ascend her again. Again, we only leveled her up to 49, just 100 EXP away from level 50, so we can save that one green book. Now we have to find more enemies to fight to level up. What do you know, there are some treasure hoarders in front of us. Since my Yao is using a Favonius Lance, we had to farm Ruin Guards as well in order to level up the weapon. Yes, my bunny is totally carrying us. So on the third day, I was still playing around with Yao Yao and getting used to her basic skills and bursts. As a dental character, she could easily destroy the Hydro Shields pretty quickly, especially with her elemental burst. So with a Favonius Lance, which has energy recharge stats, hopefully we could get our burst up time up. I also continued using my resins on the dental cube boss as well, and took her along to heal us after the fight. We could eventually ascend her again, and also started leveling up her talents. Since we're only level 59, we could only get to level 4 talent level before we stopped. I leveled up her weapon to level 50 as well, so we got more energy recharge from the Favonius Lance. On day 4, I went to farm some artifacts using some of my condensed resins. Since we are building a dendro team, I decided to farm the domain with a dendro artifacts. The first official team I also tried with Yao Yao is the Bloom team with Nilo. Since Yao Yao is a healer, we could bring her to help aid our dendro traveler with dendro application and fill in as a healer role as well. I probably got the rotations wrong, but our dendro seeds basically just exploded and enemies died. Another good thing about Yao Yao is that before you could collect the rewards, just drop the bunny down and you basically get healed by Yue Gui. By the final run, I was getting used to the team comp and did pretty well, although we did run into some trouble. What? We completed a domain in our record time of 37 seconds. Oh thanks for the heal Yue Gui. And yes, in case you guys don't know, Yao Yao Bunny's name is Yue Gui. So in day 5, we could finally ascend Yao Yao to level 70 which also unlocks a passive for Yao Yao to heal even more. We also leveled up her weapon all the way up to level 70 as well before we had to farm for more Ruin Guards. I basically went through all of Mondstadt to hunt down the Ruin Guards, but I had trouble finding this one near the Swarm Terror's lair. After finding a Ruin Guard, I quickly taught it a lesson with our Bloom team. Alright, so before this week is over, I headed over to Sumeru and started a reputation quest for extra Mora. We had to defeat the Rift Hounds, but our Yao Yao's healing was able to keep up with the damage that we've sustained, so we were able to complete our first bounty. For the next bounty, I actually tried out a different team comp. I put Beto in our party and basically slapped the giant fish stick on her. I also brought Fischl and Tainari along to form an aggravate team with Electro and Dendro elements, and went to beat up this dinosaur robot. This team is surprisingly fun, and with our characters constantly applying both elements, we were able to defeat the enemy. The next bounty was the exact same enemy, and here I made my mistake for not properly reading the skill descriptions. So I basically unleashed Yao Yao's burst and quickly swapped her off, not knowing that the other bunny spawn from her burst would disappear once she went off field. But at that time, I didn't really notice it just yet. In the end, I spent some quality time with Yue 
away and got healed one by one. After completing the bounties, I actually got to reputation 10 in Sumeru and finally unlocked our Sumeru glider. With a full week of experience maining Yao Yao, I started leveling up some artifacts to start properly building her as a healer. I found a pretty good maiden feather so I decided to upgrade it and it turned out pretty good for a maiden feather. On day 8, I went to collect some fluorescent fungi for Toma since I wanted to level him up for a different team comp. While walking around Tsurumi Island, I also encountered some enemies as well. We were basically using a 3-man team because Goro was just there for his passive of being able to see the Inazuma specialties on a mini-map. We still managed to hold our ground and took care of the enemies. We got a lot of farming done this way as well, and with our Hyper Bloom combo Fado, it worked surprisingly well. With a bit more exploration and farming, we finally found enough fungi to finally ascend to Toma. I also found a Dragon Spain city in my inventory, so I leveled it up as well. On day 9, I mostly just farm more essential materials for Yao Yao by defeating the Denzo cube and finally ascended Yao Yao to level 80. I left my Yao Yao's talent level at 566 just to see how it goes. For her weapon, I leveled up my Favonius Lance to level 80 and left it there since I'm in need of more Ruin Guard materials. The next day, I went out to hunt for more Ruin Guards. With our newly level up Toma, it's going to be our first time trying out a Burnjin team as well. So for this team rotation, I first threw out Ye Gui, switched to Xinqiao and applied Hydro with his skill and burst for the Dendro Seeds. Then switched to Toma for the big Burnjin explosion. I could also use Dendro Traveler's skills and burst to help with the Dendro applications as well when my Yao Yao skill is on cooldown. Now, now, I'm pretty sure there are better rotations and I probably have to play around with it more so if you guys have more knowledge regarding this feel free to chime in in the comment section and let me know. This is actually the first time I'm using a Burnjin focused team comp as well and I was pleasantly surprised. Each of the Denzo cores did around 20k damage when exploded and this is with my Toma being at level 80. So if I level up to 90, I'll most likely do even more damage. So while I was farming the Ruin Guard enemies and doing my usual rotations, I started noticing a problem that keeps on occurring. Even though I could defeat the enemies pretty quickly, my Thomas Burst might not recharge fast enough. Since his skill cooldown is also really long, there are a lot of awkward moments where I just stood around doing nothing because my Thomas Burst and skill wasn't ready. Since I'm farming for the Ruin Guards, I didn't really have to worry about it just yet, especially since they tend to die after one rotation. But when I eventually Actually challenge the abyss in the future, this might start posing a problem for us. In this island with 4 ruin guards, I witnessed my mistake once again, where I used Yao Yao's burst and immediately swap off her. After defeating 3 of the 4 ruin guards, we had another awkward staring contest because I didn't want to use Thomas burst. Wrecked. On day 11, I did a lantern ride event where we fought a few different waves of enemies. With us being on water, we could just apply Dendro to bloom the Dendro seeds. Then use Toma's skill to trigger the Burnjin, which literally one-shotted all the enemies. The enemies actually got a little bit harder as we got through the event eventually in Sumeru, but our Toma still took care of the enemies. I was able to complete the event and picked up Yao Yao for her consolation. On the 12th day, I did some research, and in order to fix my Toma's energy issues, I crafted a Kitane Cross Spear from Inazuma. So now we just have to level up up our new poem and test it out. So hopefully we won't have any energy issues now, especially since Toma is our only pyro character in our team. So with our new poem leveled up to 90, I decided to stop our day here. So on day 13, I did something that I should have done a long time ago. I sent my traveler and finally leveled him up to level 89. The last bit of a level will come eventually after I defeated a few enemies in the overworld because we can't waste our buffs. I ventured out into the desert to find my prey and to test out my Toma with a new weapon and see if we have any burst problems. Well, sadly to say, all of the enemies died before I got a chance to test it out. Ow, 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 ow. Alright, surely this giant worm will have enough HP for us to experiment, right? Well, both yes and no. The boss has a lot of HP, but it hides underground 70% of the time. So it's kind of hard to burst it down. So we basically wasted our burst, but we were able to chip its HP down and eventually defeated it. The next day, I went to farm for some Doritos in the desert. On the bright side, the Doritos have enough HP for us to do our burn burgeoning ding, which made me realize that our Toma still needs more energy in order for his burst to be up 100% of the time. I took a look at my artifacts and tried tweaking them a little bit for more energy. And I also tried enhancing an artifact that I had lying around in hopes of gaining more energy. But I ran out of materials, so we'll have to wait on that. So our Toma is now sitting at around 130% energy recharge, which is not ideal since we needed more. I continued to fight the Doritos and ended our day with a good amount of farming done. 
Since I have a cookie at level 80, I just thought why not try a Hyper Boom team as well. I gave her the Umbrella Sword and committed Daylight Robbery on Toma by stealing all of his Elemental Mastery artifacts. Next, I leveled up her talent as well, mainly her Elemental skills since that's generally what she needs for Hyper Bloom. With our team, we technically have two and a half healers, so if we die, then we have skill issues. I went to farm for some Eremites in the desert and tested our Hyper Bloom damage. The damage was pretty similar to Burn Journey with Toma, but I could trigger the reactions a bit easier since we didn't have to worry about our bursts. And with our cookie skill having 100% of her uptime, we only had to focus on getting the bloom reactions and she'll do the rest automatically. With our hyper bloom team, I decided to try the giant worm boss again and we were able to chase it down easier since hyper bloom auto targets the enemy. Like, look at this. If it's not aimbot, then like, I don't know what is. Anyways, we defeated a boss with our Yegui bunny and finished the day. On day 16, I took my team to Inazuma to do some hangar farming. It felt really refreshing to just hyper bloom the enemies and see the big numbers with relatively low investment to quickly defeat the enemies one by one. Once the dental seeds were on the ground, our cookie just slayed and we didn't even have to do anything else. The best thing is, we didn't have to worry about our HP, considering that Yao Yao, Cookie, and even Xincho to a degree could all heal up. So it's a pretty fun and unkillable team that can dish out big damage. So on day 17, I didn't actually do much, besides final ascending my umbrella and leveling up the weapon to level 90 to get more elemental mastery for my cookie. I left both my sacrificial sword and Favonius lance at level 80 because I didn't have enough rune guard material to ascend them. The next few days, I focused on a spiral abyss. For floor 9, I brought my Yao Yao's hyper bloom comp to the first half and started. Since it was floor 9, we got through the first chamber without much trouble at all. In the next chamber, most of the enemies were pretty weak and we pretty much killed all of them before they could do anything. For Chamber 3, we just let the Hyper Bloom do their work and defeated the enemies. I started Day 19 continuing the Abyss. This time I brought the Burnjin team with us, and the enemies are starting to get more sturdy, which I'm happy for because I can finally start testing out my rotations. As expected, the damage was really good and we were able to get through the first chamber in less than 20 seconds. The second chamber had Sparky, the Electro Lava Troll, which was perfect for our team comp. The Electro Abyss Mage quickly went down and got erased from existence, with Sparky quickly following. The third chamber was actually a bit tougher with a system mages and a mirror maiden, and Automa died because I got careless. In my second attempt, I played a bit more carefully this time, and targeted the system mages first. After that, I was able to clear the chamber with ease. So for floor 11, I stayed on my Burnjin team, which will turn out to be a mistake later on. Anyways, the first half, we met our favorite Dorito enemy again, and defeated each of them easily. The second chamber had a bunch of ruined enemies, so you could just pop the seeds all at once to do massive damage. Remember when I said I made a mistake choosing a Burnjin team? Well, on Chamber 3 this happened. We were met with 4 helicopter enemies that basically hovered most of the time. And since we didn't bring any bow character, it made this chamber challenging. Coupled with the burn gin and my Thomas shield not strong enough, I eventually got a combo missile attack and died. The second try I played extra carefully so we won't die. But the same exact thing happened. I went back for the third time and everything went well. Until this last enemy just hovering above us and taunting us. This is where I basically made our mistake. And since we didn't have any bow characters, it just stayed up there and wasted our time. It did come down for a brief second, but just before we could finish it off, it flew up again. It basically ruined our chance of getting 3 stars in this last chamber. Now I'm getting really angry. Going in for the fourth time, I had a different plan. I basically went for the ones on the ground, and if they fly up, I immediately switched targets. This actually turned out pretty well, and I was able to deal very good damage to all of the enemies. The last enemy also sat there for us to kill as well, and we finally completed this floor. On day 20, I continued the abyss to floor 12. But this time I brought the Hyper Bloom team with Cookie. We were greeted by the Perpetual Mechanical Array in the first chamber, and we quickly unleashed all of our bursts on it. We got it to phase pretty quickly, and also defeated the enemy spawns. After that, the boss basically sat there while we finished it off. We were met with the Doritos again in the second chamber, and luckily we had our Dendro Hyper Bloom team with us. The fight was pretty easy since they mostly just sat there staring at us, and with our Yao Yao healing us, we didn't have to worry about dying. There was also an Aramite that spawned in the end, and even she was easily taken care of. Finally, in the last chamber, we had to deal with a Dendro Peacock. Even though it resists our Dendro attacks, the Hyper Bloom still hits very hard. We were also constantly healing, so even with the aggressiveness of the boss, we persevered and eventually took it down to complete the Spiral Abyss. The next day, I focused on the Lisa event. The challenges were actually pretty easy since we got to use some of the buffs provided to us in the domain, and also some trial characters that synergizes really well with Yao Yao and our reaction team comp, and we were able to complete all of the challenges and got our Lisa skin. So since we're on day 22 now, we went to fight a few weekly bosses as a solo Yao Yao. Since Yao Yao is primarily a healer, our goal 
is to just keep all of our teammates alive. With a Raiden boss, we basically just spammed our burst once it was off cooldown, and were able to constantly heal our team with our Yeg ways. It was pretty easy, so our mission was successful in the end. Next, I joined a child game, and this boss is honestly pretty easy in co-op. Our bunny was enough to keep everyone alive, and we also had a Chi Chi helping us with the healing as well, which basically kept all of our teammates HP for most of the time. The fight went by pretty quickly, and we were in and out of the domain instantly. On day 24, I queued into an Asdaha match, and luckily enough, we had a Kokomi with us. I had to keep my eye out on Gang Yu since she might just tunnel vision a boss and die, but it seemed like our Yenfei needed the heals more. Things were pretty scary in the end, with our DPS almost dying. But after I dropped my burst, everyone basically healed up. I'm not sure if I would have been able to keep all of them alive by myself. So thanks, Kokomi. So during my Signora co-op, I actually met a C6 Yellen that instantly depleted the boss's HP. And the second phase basically got destroyed as well. The last wiki boss we fought was Scaramouche, who was also very easy in co-op. Alright, so who do you guys think is cuter? Yellow's bunny, Yegwe, or the floaty bunny? Vote for one in the comment section and let me know. Anyways, we got through the first phase pretty quickly. And as somebody that usually solo this boss, I had no idea what was happening as I was getting achievements. With the second phase, we were doing a pretty good job healing everyone. And after stunning the boss, we were able to finish this domain. So with a 1 month almost up, I tried to build Yoyo as a DPS. I swapped her weapon to my Staff of Homa and stole all my Hu Tao's artifacts. With a C6 Bennett, I'm gonna try to use her similar to a Hu Tao with Pyro Infusion and see how much damage she deals. This might not be the best DPS build, but it was pretty satisfying seeing Yoyo doing 20k damage. On the final day, I had the last standoff with a Cryo Flower boss to test my damage, and also show her off as a DPS. Yoyo as a healer is honestly really fun, and her bunny is also very cute. She fills the Denzo healer role very nicely, and could fit into a lot of Denzo team comps, to either help apply Denzo or heal. Hopefully I did Yoyo mains proud with my 30 days of maining her, and brought her from zero to hero. If you guys have any characters you would like to see next, or any suggestions for this series, feel free to also comment and let me know, and I'll consider who to main next. So make sure to like the comments with the characters you want to see in the next video. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to let me know whether or not you would like to see more, and we'll meet again in the next one.